This video is brought to you by Field Pulse, field service software built for the trades. Click on the link below and try risk-free for seven days. What's going on guys? All right, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a maintenance on uh, this system. This is a regular system that we have been maintaining for a while. It is um, on the older side. I know last time it had a few little issues that we've seen that's probably going to be coming up soon. So in this video, we're going to be fully checking this system, trying to find anything that could cause any problems throughout the summer. So uh, watch till the end and you'll get to see all the things that I find in this video. I appreciate y'all watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and please consider subscribing to the channel. So this is an R22 system. I know last time I was here I did find a couple issues so we're going to check over everything again. Document it. Drain's not stopped up. Right. Definitely got water problems. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna jump it just to get a good idea of how the system's working, how the furnace is working and heating. I'm getting old, so I gotta have my knee pad. So we're gonna check our inducer amps. Two point eight FLA. Especially when a washer and blower comes on. They are definitely over ramping. Going to field pulse here and put in all of our information so far. We're gonna put it over into cooling. See how this motor runs high speed. These PSC motors, it's good to, to put the door on it and you can get a good idea if you think it's close to the, the RLA or the FLA. We do have a capacitor up here. It's going to be hard to see it on the video, but I'm just going to put this right here. 10.95 for a 12. And that's definitely below the 5% threshold on this one. What I want to do is check all these blower wheels this way and just uh, just so you can well document it. Mm, that's pretty
pretty dirty. We also got oil, looks like from the shaft. We'll check and see uh, what the play's like in the shaft. Definitely has excessive play in it. So this is 2004. I don't know if I mentioned that before or not. So typically I like to do this first before running the heat, but I forgot. So we're gonna do it now. I think it's had time to cool off. When these igniters are used, um, from the moment they light up, as they're cooling down, they will read really high. So you have to give it time to cool back off before you take a reading. Best thing to do is just to check it before you use it. 51.3. On the ohms. If it's turning really white, regardless of what the ohms read, I will recommend it then too. You always want to check in these bins for sure. We'll take a look at the secondary heat exchanger. If it looks stopped up or anything, honestly, it looks okay. Okay. So I was rooting around in here. You want to make sure you hadn't disconnected any other wires. Oh, that looks okay. So we're gonna we're gonna check this evaporator real quick. We usually, you know, always like to remove the door and check everything, especially if it's an older uh, coil. But typically, if it's over five, six years old, I will remove the door just to take a peek, see if it's starting to uh, have a lot of corrosion. If it is, I will do a leak search with my with a leak detector. If uh, they're aluminum, then I usually won't. But um, the the newer ones definitely don't leak like the old ones do, and they don't rust like the old ones did. And the rust really makes these things leak quicker. So it's probably a good thing they all switch to aluminum. And this is a piston, no TXV. So we're going to check the charge a little differently. Not, not a whole lot, but it's really going to be going more off of the return air temperature. And we're going to be paying most, atten most of our attention to the superheat, not the subcooling, to see if we've got a, the correct amount of charge in it. Because your, your subcooling on a, on a piston is going to be, could be a pretty wide range. Um, and you can usually dial in pretty close to where the superheat needs to be on these uh, when they're pistons. But one thing you have to remember, you have to stay patient. Take it takes a while for the pressures to get to where they're going to be, usually 15, 20 minutes, and slowly that's, that superheat's gonna work its way down. If you turn it on and check your pressures right then, it's gonna look like it's low every time. So you gotta be a little patient. Another thing I'll do is I'll, it really makes a difference if you take a picture of the condition of the coil. So you can show the homeowner in your report, or even I usually do it while I'm standing there with them. And that, uh, that really helps sort of show what you're talking about. And uh, most people don't like to see all that rust on there, so. And this is the, the DR82, so it's the infrared, not the heated diode. I did have the older version heated diode last time, and it was okay. It was just super, super touchy, and um, 
it was just had a lot of negative uh, false positives that it would it would trigger all the time man I wish this door could come all the way off sometimes it's not worth struggling with something if it just makes it a little bit harder to do then that's what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna be fighting with this door any longer And I'll see if I can run it along the side of the coil, just like that. Okay, not picking up anything. We will try again. We can try outside. I usually don't have much luck when you do electronic searches outside just because there's, if you do it, you have to make sure that it's before you hook up um, and just try not to be close to those service ports because a good leak detector is probably gonna pick it up every time you get close to a service port. Supposedly these things will, if you have caps off, it will leak a little bit. All of them do, very, very little. All right, I'll get this button back up and we'll go outside. I think that was just loose too. Oh boy. Good grief. Man, if they, uh, if they ran their big bent the same as this one with no glue, yeah, it's got glue. Yeah, I can see the glue around it. But that vent's definitely leaking. That's my good deed for the day. I do still have it jumped in here just uh, so we're not having to worry about uh, delays in thermostats and that type of stuff. I'll come back in here and get all that out when I finish. And we're gonna put our probes in place real quick. So one thing we'll measure quick, you do want to make sure you're going in and zeroing your uh, pressure probes before you hook up because I have noticed that one or both will fluctuate to negative two, all, you know, down to uh, positive two uh, PSI when they're first turned on. So you want to make sure they're zeroed. And I have it as a piston. We have a third uh, psychrometer we're going to use for our outdoor air. That right there. And this is a core depressor that I like to use, especially in heating, but I really like it in the when checking cooling on your high side so you don't have all that high pressure uh, blowback. And then you just pull it in until it uh, makes presses that valve core in. And then you can undo it, and then you have no pressure to deal with when you're taking it off. That's where I did it last time. You can tell it's still sanded. Okay. The superheat is always gonna look high to begin with. You have to really let these things run for a minute to get an idea on where it really is. Guys, let's see what uh, Our split, yeah, not that great. So let's, uh, we're just gonna let it keep running and see what it gets to. All right, so while this is, while it's running, we'll go ahead and take this door off and uh, check our amp draws and all of that on here. What a genius technician that wrote the size of the capacitor if it's not able to be seen. I wonder who did that. <clears throat> this should be the 
fan. We'll check the fan first. 0 0.67. Our FLA is 1 for the fan. Five point six on the compressor. Total amps six point five two. And I did replace the contactor last time and the capacitor. So we're going to give it a few more minutes and uh, see how it looks. After I'm going to give it another ten. 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll check it and see how it looks after that. Alright, it's been about another 10, at least 10 minutes or so. Um, our, uh, our suction line is still a little warm. Our superheat is definitely higher than where it should be. Um, with measuring everything through MeasureQuick, uh, five, a 5 degree superheat is what, what we're looking for. 19.5 definitely isn't cutting it and that's already with there's uh, apparently a previous technician has lowered that blower speed just to try to get it uh, get the delta T higher I'm assuming uh, but with that low bl blower speed it should definitely have a low subcooling or low superheat but it it doesn't um, and the, uh, like I was saying the range for these subcoolings with a piston is just really really wide you can see Three degrees to 42 degrees allowable range for a for subcooling. Um, so superheat's what it's all about when it comes to pistons. So our our delta our delta T is still not very good. I remember this being the case last time I was here as well. All right. So overall, to be uh, the age that it is, it's not in awful shape. It is, uh, I mean, it's still working okay. It's definitely gonna be struggling this summer, that's for sure. So I ended up talking to the homeowner, letting him know that it did look a little low on refrigerant, told him the situation with R22, you know, and just went over the, the condition of the system. It is a little older, um, didn't find any major problems, so that's definitely a good thing. Um, I do think that it will last a little bit longer and we'll just continue to check it each time we come to do a maintenance on it. And uh, I would say once we do confirm there's definitely a leak in the system, that's when it would be time to replace it in my opinion. I hope y'all enjoyed this one and we'll see you at the next video. Peace.